Amy, welcome to the show. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, I appreciate you taking the time. There, there are so many things I want to talk about. I'm trying to think like where to even begin, but actually I'm curious about your journey first. Uh, you've been doing executive coaching and like helping people for so long, but how did you first decide that that was the path for you? I want to start there for some context for people. Yeah. So I subtly, I knew really mm -hmm. young that I would be in some sort of capacity in helping usher and facilitate really transformative experiences. I just didn't have words yeah. for it as a kid. It's yeah, it started, you know, when I started teaching math in high school and then I was a UGS I UC Berkeley, I majored in math. And so I was teaching math at Berkeley and tutoring. I was teaching piano. And so there was always this part of me that was very facilitative and very, very intent on getting people to the next level in understanding and it was really what put me on this coaching path was I had been at Sun Microsystems for 10 years and I was pretty much in every role except for sales for 10 years and have a, a really good understanding of how things worked. And I really, really, really loved working there. Was super successful, was on the fast track, was great, had my first child and then my whole world fell apart. And not because I became a mom. In fact, I that was the greatest gift I could have experienced. It was because I became a mom that everything I thought I knew about myself, I just questioned. And so that was the big wake-up call that made me, forced me to really re-examine who I was and why I was doing what I was doing. And I knew deep in my heart that even though I was successful and my life looked great on paper, I was truly not living all of me. And I had a big, 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 big breakthrough and totally um, just completely did a 180 and decided to navigate in a whole new way because the insight I got was, oh my gosh, Amy, you're going about this all wrong. It's not about figuring it out. It's about feeling it out. And I know that sounds simple, but the wisdom in that was profound and whew, immediately put me on a different path. And Boom, 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 boom. I, I mean, I didn't choose coaching. It really chose me because I think of much, many of the <laughs> choices and the study and the fascinations and all of a sudden coaching emerged. And I was like, whoa, everything in my life makes sense. This is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> there, There's a lot there. Okay. I, I know there's a lot. You've posted online, you've seen online, you've interviewed, et cetera, about coaching. We're going to get into that in a second. But I think something that's not maybe talked about as much as in this either is like from finding that first like inkling was very early that you knew you kind of interested in this then you kind of made it more real and tangible like, okay i'm gonna be a coach i'm like coach people but you've also like low-key built an amazing business it looks like and i don't think that's like really talked about much so just take me through going from that because a lot of people who you know they do something for their career doesn't mean they're gonna start a company for it or have their own thing for that but you went from that to like now you've worked with so many different people across industries it looks like and built a really great business too how have you built the business side of it i'm gonna get into way more on the coaching side too but like i think this gets glossed over and i'm i'm like i see it first and i'm like fascinated by wait a minute like what did amy build how'd she build this thing because it looks amazing how have you built this company amy <laughs> oh my gosh it, you know i so appreciate this question justin because you know, i mean people really don't ask that and I think it is important. And the answer that I'm going to share is either really going to click with people or it's going to make people eye roll. And so here's the answer. I am completely driven by inspiration. And I am so clear that what I do and everything that I want and everything that I'm up for and everything that I vision is not for a plan, a strategy, a business plan, a number or um, an ideal, or it's, it's because I, it's because it's all for a feeling. And so my North star, and I am so aligned with this, my North star is a feeling. What do I want to feel? And so what does that mean in practice? That means that I am checking in on every single decision I make. It doesn't map to a strategy. It maps to a feeling. Because what happens is most people want to build a business and they're thinking numbers first. And their why is to achieve something and check off a box. My why is a feeling. And so 
where this gets really easy, but also becomes really frustrating for others to hear is that you really can't have a business plan. You can't say, this is what I want it to be five years from now. You can have a vision and you say, it would be really cool if that were true, but I'm not going to bust my butt to make that happen because what's most important to me right now are the little decisions I make right now. And I'm constantly moving in the direction of always choosing the thing that's uncomfortably exciting, but it has to feel here, expansive, like, oh, and there, there has to be a combination of relief and joy and momentum. It cannot be frenzied, calculated, and because I know that that's just going to veer me off path. And I'm, so, I'm with you. because I'm with you. We're I doing navigate, this, Andy. In we're doing it. Way, <laughs> and this is going to sound so woo woo. So, you're either with me or you're going to totally be like, it, <laughs> People are like, oh gosh, here's that Berkeley chick. There's, there's, and do that, you know, right? It's it, it, so when you are so in alignment with what you want to feel, and you choose the most expansive feeling versus the restricted, heady feeling, it is truly the path of most abundance, the path of least resistance to the most abundance, and that's when. All of a sudden, things just start showing up, and all of a sudden, it's just it becomes effortless. And so, but but what does that mean? That means I have to truly, truly honor my inspiration. So, for example, when I when I was getting the, my practice off the ground, I I knew that I was like I had to name it. I had to I had to come up with the name of my practice. <laughs> And I could totally tell the difference between like, okay, I'm going to think, oh, I'm a non-duality coaching. No, that's lame. Da, 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 da. Am I coming up with all those stupid names, right? And here I am, I'm on, I'm working out in the gym. We're on vacation in Mexico. And my inspiration had told, I'm like, like I'm listening to this book and I, but I know there's something, I'm not really liking the book. It's by Wayne Dyer. And I'm like, God, why do I keep listening to this? It's like, no, there's something <laughs> in this. And all of a sudden he said something and I heard always on purpose. And I literally flew off the treadmill and I'm like, that's it. That's the day. <laughs> right. And so it's these series of like, I'm listening for the inspiration. So, you know, I get the name and then all of a sudden things start emerging and then I get, I get this strong pull and inspiration. You have to trademark this, Amy, trademark this. So this was like in 2013 and everybody's like, why do you want to trademark this? I'm like, I just have this feeling. I just need to trademark this. And so it's, it's constantly following that feeling because it feels amazing, not because it sounds like a good idea. And so it, it takes a commitment. It takes a dedication, but it also takes a tremendous amount of trust. But it's so much easier to do it this way than to like map out these business plans and this is where I'm headed and these are the numbers and this is how I know for successful. So that, you know, really that, that's how it all came to be. And that's how it continues to grow from that too. So with that, I know you mentioned another podcast, I think you did something around people are looking for these outcomes, but really it's a matter of the feeling you get from the outcome is what you're really actually after, which I think that clicked when I listened to this podcast that you had, I was like, Oh, that's interesting to think about. Cause a lot of people I could think about would be like, okay, only out outcomes, but it's like, then what, like, what do you want to feel from that? What's after that? Which means which is more so much more than that. And with you, then we're starting this business. Like you, you started because you know, like this is aligned with what you wanted to do. You started this coaching practice. It was it. Did you know or have an idea? How did you decide like who you're going to work with? Types of people, like, like because that type of there's so many there ways you could have gone. Right, this world is yours. Like, how did you decide on that? Totally. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna come right back to that. Something that I think is super important to mention. So. Following on from that last, to, to bridge that last question yeah. and answer to this, I think part of the reason that my my business really continues to grow at this incredible rate and it continues to be very successful, the feeling I'm after is not my, is not for me. And so that I actually have to be really clear about. Yeah, I want, I, yeah, I want freedom and I want joy and I want abundance and I want all that stuff. But I know that that's going to follow when... I am so bought into something bigger. And so for me, the feeling I want is that feeling of possibility that sparks in another's eyes because yeah. it unlocks them. I live for, I mean, this is going to sound so woo-woo, but I truly live for making the world a better place, one conversation at a time, raising the vibration of consciousness. And like, that's where my purpose is. Like, this is not about me. This is about this is about others. And so that's really the feel I'm going after. And that's what I'm following. And so 
Be- and I here's my theory. Because it's not about me, and because I am so, so clear that this is for others, I, I think it just naturally is, is um, it's, it, it just works. So I think now that, so I'm going to take that now and answer this question, like, how do I know who I want to work for? I, I'm pretty clear about the, the mindset. It's not so much, I want to work with executives. I want to work with moms. I want to work with, yeah. you know, in education. I want to work with teens. All of it's on the table. All of it. You know, I, 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 I don't know if, if this came out in any of the podcasts, but there was a period in my, this, the 10 years I've been coaching I was coaching at a drug and rehab center for a good year plus, and I was doing their group coaching for all of their, their clients that were in, in, in house, you know, and residential. And so I'd have 30 people in a room and they were at very stages in their recovery. So you were having the, you know, the heroin addicts that were just really not super present. And then you had, I mean, it was just, it was fascinating but what I learned, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's not any certain class. It's not any person's job. What I'm after is the person that's willing, the person that wants, that's willing, that's open-minded, that's willing to take responsibility for the quality of their life, that is somewhat self-aware, that is, is, that's willing to say, you know what, I, yeah, I can shift my perception And I get that if I start to shift my perception, my world changes more than I'm going to change the pieces around. So that's really what guides me into who comes my way. It's just that clarity in who's a good fit for this work. And then naturally it just starts, it just kind of presents itself. For that too. So with that, I would love to hear more about working with someone. So what does that even look like? What, what, I guess where I want to start with is where do, what do people mostly come to you initially for, because you're working with a lot of executives and these big companies and everything, they're like, Amy, we want to work, work, with, work with you. What is the why behind that? Like, how does that, where does that start at least? Oh my gosh, this is going to sound so simple, but it's this. It's, <laughs> I'm stuck and I won't be stuck anymore. I like to not be And stuck. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I've tried everything and I just, I, so it could be stuck with their own happiness. It could be stuck with their team. It could be stuck in conversation. It could be stuck in their progress. It could be stuck in their I mean, health journey. It's just that feeling of, oh, I don't know where to go. And more so, and it usually, it's usually not acknowledged, but I'm doing this to myself and I don't know how, and I don't know why, and I don't know what I need to do different to break through this. From that then, understanding that they're stuck in some capacity, what does this look like for you in terms of helping them along the way? Like, cause I, I'm just thinking of all the like obviously super driven, ambitious people you're going to be working with and who are going to listen and like, okay, some first it's like kind of admitting that they are stuck and wanting to work with someone is like that first step you could say. But then from there, how do you get them out of there? What does that process even look like? I would just love to hear more about that for you. So this is where the magic <laughs> kind of comes in where it's, I mean, it's, it's, um, I wish I, well, no, I don't wish what's, What's true is that yeah. I, there is no formula here, right? And so it's not like I take someone through the process saying, okay, here's stage one, here's stage two, and then we're going to do this process. And it's not like that at all. It is a true partnership where I, I'm, I'm, I dive deep into conversation to understand one's reality because I'm essentially asking questions to identify like, for example, with you, for if we were to do this, I'd be listening to identify what you don't know about what you don't know about your what's what's going on in your world. And so that requires a bunch of really rich, very nourishing conversations. Um, yeah. But what guides, so maybe I'll answer and give you something tangible here. What's going to guide success is really starting with the question, okay, I get that you're stuck. Yeah. You know, I get that you're clear about what you don't want to be true. So let's talk about what you do want to be true. So if it's not this, then what? What is success? Like if you could, and so the question I usually start with is, what do you want to make true for yourself that isn't true? But if it were, it would make all the difference Mm. in the world. Oh, and then I follow up with, what do you want to feel? Let's not, not, not how much money you want to make. How much, what do you want to achieve? No. What do you want to feel? So now once that's illuminated, 
we can start to see, oh, okay, what are some of these perceptual habits? What are some of these mental processes and some of these behaviors that you're kind of going through that are probably getting in the way of that? And that's where we start to deconstruct it. Are there a lot of commonalities you see within that? Because you've just done so much coaching over over time. Like, like what are the threads that you know to pull on? Like, I'm just trying to get in the mind of it because I'm just, I'm just kind of curious about everything within, within this. Yeah. Oh my gosh, thanks for that. I mean, there are definitely are some commonalities. And part of the reason I wrote the my book that I wrote was because here's a, here's a big one. Particularly with pretty successful people. And and this is why I had to write it. Everyone entertains fear inside on some level. And it's not always conscious. But it's there. And I am convinced that this fear is due to how we develop as humans and the beliefs that we take on as a way to survive and really to survive rejection because rejection maps to death in the brain. And so, I mean, that's a much bigger story here. So I share that because one of the most, I mean, 100% what threads through all and every one of my clients is recognizing that, oh my gosh, there are some false limiting beliefs inside, like that I'm not worthy, that I'm not competent, that I'm not good enough, that it's some belief of not enough. And it's, and it's subtle. It's not like, oh, I'm not good enough. Sometimes it's like, oh, I really don't be- belong in this VC game. I, everybody, I'm not one of them. I'm different. Or I'm, you know, we're the misfits. Or the, there's some belief of I don't fit in. Now, that belief causes a, well, first off, and it can cause a neurochemical reality, which actually causes a perceptual reality that's going to instill fear and influence the ways in which we perceive, interpret, and navigate the world. And so, long story short, the common thread and the big theme is, the, it really is about the relationship we have with ourselves. What do I believe to be true about myself? What do I choose to know to be true about myself? And the opportunity with each and every one of the individuals that I have worked with is shoring up that relationship with self. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I'm curious about that then too. Like how much of that is that they need to like t- need to like check in with someone. So whether it be you or someone, they need to check in, but also like do like the internal work themselves in, in between. Like what do you see from that or how does that typically go? Because again, I'm always just thinking of other people listening and like, how can they at least start the process of like trying to think about some of these things and question their reality in some way? I'm curious what you see from that. Well, l- let me give you the massive unlock. So here's like a big spoiler <laughs> alert in my book that it's, this is, I mean, this truly is the question you want to ask if you want to know exactly how it is that you're holding yourself back. It is due to a false belief you're holding. And it could be oh, that I'm really not one of them, oh, that I'm not smart enough, oh, that, you know, and we've got the whole story as to why that's true. But to really get to the core of, of what that false limiting belief is, here's the question. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask everybody that's listening, and you have to promise me that you only answer from your survival brain. Meaning, I'm going to ask you this question, and the survival part of you is going to go, Ugh, and it's going to have an answer. But then the brilliant logical part of you is going to totally try to rationalize its way out of it. And like, no, 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 no. But that's not true. And that's not true. So don't listen to that part because we really have to see what fear says. Okay. So the question is this. What are you most afraid other people, namely other people of influence, Mm -hmm. would either find out, decide, or think about you? What are you most afraid others would decide, find out, or think? about you yeah now for most people (laughs) they're gonna get an answer that makes them go and then their brilliant part goes yeah but that's not true and here's why and so that tug of war is what we're battling all the time but unless we fully take a good look at what you answer with you're gonna live with that tug of war and your your fear is always gonna be there. So really what this is showing us is whatever you answer with, and this is gonna be hard for some people to hear, whatever you answer (laughs) with, you have just identified what you think about yourself. And the bigger story is you're deathly afraid of it being found out because it maps to being rejected, which now then maps to pain 
in the brain, which maps to ultimate death, which is silly, but that's why we operate in the way that we operate. So whatever that, that, that belief that, and it's Mm. not true. Like if you answered with that, I'm actually not that smart, that I'm a fraud. That's a, so there, there's a common thread, especially with pe- very successful people, the people I'm a fraud and everyone thinks, oh, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. And they don't want to talk about it. But the truth is every single person at that round table and that executive table in that boardroom, there's some form of this going on. Well, I'm the only one. And again, it has to do with how we develop as humans. So that, that right there, if we want to get to the core of true transformation and freedom, it starts, it starts there. With that too, so I'm curious because you've done so much coaching and it says it's been like a decade within this company even. How have you, you as a coach even, progressed from when you start, you know you're going to be a coach, you're working with people, great. Then you end up actually working with people and seeing results and everything. Like take me through your progression, like maybe what's changed in terms of how you work with people or even your approach. Like how has that evolved in, you know, even in the last decade? I'm just curious about that. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is such a rich question. <laughs> this is such a rich answer. I, re- I appreciate that. It def- it can definitely continues to evolve. I, you know, what I think is true about how I coach and what I'm good at, like, I'll feel good about that for a little while. And then all of a sudden it starts to change. So it's been a continual evolution yeah. of how it is that I describe what it is that I do. But I do remember way back when it was pretty clear to me, and I think I read this in a magazine somewhere, that I wouldn't be able to really describe to others what it was that I did until I had worked mm. with at least a hundred unique clients. And I read that early, I'm certain I read that early on. And that was pretty true. So or in the early years, I recognized that, you know, once I kind of hit that mark, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is how I would distinguish myself as a coach from that person over there. Okay, got it. But now as I've continued to work with all these different people, whether it's, you know, whether it's in the financial industry, whether it's in the tech industry, whether it's leaders, whether it's drug and rehab, whether it's teenagers, it's, um, I'm constantly, I don't, I'm, I, it's a, it is a constant progression of an, an evolution. So I don't, I don't know if it could kind of chunk it into stages. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. always evolving as you get more feedback and get more results yeah. and everything and just different yeah. approaches, maybe different types of people potentially. And Yeah. The only thing I would say, the biggest kind of shift where I really was like, yeah, okay, Amy, just claim it. This is true. Was I'm, I'm becoming more comfortable calling myself a communication coach, an executive communication coach, a communication coach for, uh, over the past year, because again, my, my inspiration has led me to be fascinated with this medium of communication because I recognize this is where everything's happening. And so out of sheer fascination and passion, I have dove, I just, I've, I dove deep. And so, you know, certified in conversational intelligence, totally into the neuroscience of trust. But for me, what I've come to realize is this, this realm of communication, this is a symptom of the relationship we have with ourselves. And yet this is where everything happens. And so everybody's interested in getting better at this because they wouldn't say it, but they get, oh, this is where, this is where everything happens. Cause it's not like anything happens in a vacuum. It's all happening in this medium. And so what I have found over the past year is that everybody wants to get better at this, at this, at this realm of communication. And so I focus a lot here and I and and whether it's public speaking or pitching or presentation skills or you know team dynamics or fixing a an executive team because of their you know culture whatever it's this is the entry point for me and it seems to click for folks when they just say oh yeah Amy's a really good communication coach I'm like well yeah sure but for me I'm like well that's just the opening because we start doing yeah, this and then it's start. like you know because this communication this is symptomatic of what we truly believe about ourselves. So the confidence, the, how we project, how we interpret, how our impact lands on others really is largely due to that belief structure within. So, yeah. There's two things you mentioned there that I want to pull on a little bit. 
bit. So one, you mentioned trust and then you mentioned working with teams. So we haven't really talked about teams and how organizations, which is like another organism compared to the individuals, but they're within that. So I'm curious on working with teams, like how do you go about that in terms of what issues they have? And you mentioned that somewhere like uh, around interpersonal trust within kind of company culture and everything like that. Like how are you helping companies or what kind of issues do they have and how you help them through those on a company basis? Oh boy. Big, um, so I think to answer this in the way you've asked is taking a step back, I really take a systems approach to all of this, right? So even if it's an individual, if I'm coaching an individual, like there is a whole system at play and that system is, okay, start from the relationship they have with themselves to the ability to interact and create trust with others to the habits that they form and the, in the, in and the results that they're creating in their world. If, you know, so in my body language for anyone listening, I'm, it's like, it's kind of like showing this tree, the whole health of the tree. So I really take the systems approach with an individual. When I'm working with a leader relative to a team, I recognize that we also have to take a yeah. systems approach. Nothing's happening in a vacuum. And here's the challenge. And I have to remind every single person I'm working with, look, everyone yep. is the hero in the story here. Everyone. Everyone is their own, is the hero in the story, <laughs> but we forget that everybody's thinking that way. <laughs> and so we have, and so when I'm working with a team, say, then it's really important to me to partner with each of these individuals to understand the world according to them and their hero story, but then to be able to accurately and objectively describe what are these interaction dynamics due to some of these patterns, the communication patterns, the, and, and let's just name it, it's, it's always the communication patterns. Conflict, challenges, and the opportunities, it's, it's all at the level of communication. If, if, there's, if there's a break, it's, if there's a tension, it's, it's just a breakdown in communication. And so I have to really work to understand the perception from each person according to them and their hero story. I've never really said it that way. So this is kind of fun to talk it through, <laughs> right? But, and it's, it, and, but then helping the team see objectively, ah, okay, I see. I see how that went off the rails. I see how I could make this personal. I, okay, I, I see how you could have made that personal. Okay, Here, and then it's a matter of what are the tools now? Okay, we get the understanding. We now have the self-awareness. We see the landscape clearly. How do we chart a course for where we're trying to go? And that, that's, that then I would say, then, then we do the work to create agreements and commitments to operationalize a lot of these insights. I mean, I would love to dive into that part of it. Just with, with you mentioned the tools moving forward after you kind of, uh, kind of have seen some things, what are some of those tools moving forward with these companies and what they use? I'm curious too. Yeah. Well, it kind of really depends on, so it, it totally depends on the opportunity. Yeah. And so if we stick to, conver like, if we want to be really conversationally intelligent, if we want to be super effective and efficient in being able to get our work done and get, and get more done faster, yeah. then, then it's going to be a matter of, you know, how, how can we, how can we, oh, here it is. So here are some tools. Like we're human, we're going to get triggered. So here we are, lots of stress going on, deadlines. We're going to get really transactional naturally because yeah. there's so much to do. Now, when we're too transactional for too long, we're going to start to create distrust because we start to need to protect ourselves. And so a tool might be, when it starts to feel pretty transactional, we're just going to raise our hand, right? And so it's not like there's these universal tools. That, and I mean, there there is a handful that I will offer, you know, as frameworks. But in terms of the, ag the agreements and the commitments and the tools that teams come up with, they mm -hmm. co-create these. It's like, oh, I get it. Okay, so when we're in conversation, like I just had to do this this morning. This morning, I had to go work with a team that kind of got off track a little bit. And what we realized is, <laughs> hey, y'all have good intentions. Y'all just forgot that. And really where the opportunity is, is as you start having these conversations, you're triggering each other. 
You got to stop it at the trigger because the moment you get triggered, you're going to misinterpret. The moment you get triggered, you're going to make it mean something. The moment you get triggered, you're going to deploy some of these destructive conflict responses. Ha, we can't do that. So where do we, we have to stop it at the trigger. So what we devised this morning, which was when you can feel it in yourself or you see it in your colleague, you just say, hey, trigger, trigger, which is a code for come back, up level, look at the landscape, right, 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 right. right. So that's kind of a, a, an example of some of the tools. And what's magic about it is it's co-created. So they own it, you know? Yeah. And coming back to as what I always am curious about too, with any, any coaches I always want to ask, um, what, cause everyone like hears of executive coaches and like, they have like, know they exist, these mythical executive coaches. And they're like, Oh, I actually work well. And like, it's so useful and helpful. Like everyone pretty much says that universally, but for people who are like considering it or curious, how should they even know to work with someone or like when to work with someone, just any insights around that for people that might be helpful. Cause I know people are going to listen like, well, I've heard of an executive coach, but I don't know if I should get one or why would I want to work with them? I'm just curious on anything that there you can tell us on that. Oh, awesome. Great question. All of us have blind spots and I mean, I have blind spots and there's, a, a, I, I myself get coached because there's stuff I don't know that I don't know. And so you want to start working with a coach because you know you can't access mm. those blind spots by yourself. And so what a coach does is partner with you on your biggest aspirations. Because what's also true is that you've got big, you've got big dreams and goals. And whether that's like me, a feeling, right, and a realization of a state of being, or if it's like others, which is, uh, you know, a number, retirement, owning a company, I don't know, whatever. But we've got big, big, big aspirations. Now, no doubt you're on your way to trying to make that happen. And no doubt you're getting in your way of trying to make that happen. And so in, an, in executive coaching, we are really digging into the ways in which you're holding yourself back, kind of within that work context, within the relationships you have with your team and the work context, personally, the beliefs you hold, because it's not that it's hard to get to that dream state. It's that you're making it hard to get to that dream <laughs> state. And so working with a coach is going to help you see how and how, how, how and why that's true. But more importantly, what you have to do about that. How do we deconstruct these obstacles and make it happen? It is interesting. Like my background, uh, I was a personal trainer out of undergrad. And so I've definitely worked with a lot of people and it's all the mental side of it was bigger than anything else. Like, cause like we'd be in the gym for two or three hours a week. It's like, all right, well, what about the 165 other hours that you're not with me? And so it's all a mental game. And so I love talking to other coaches and like, you're, you're always trying to get better and like figure out different ways to like break through with people. And everyone's different, has a unique circumstance, like their own way that you have to like find a way to solve it. So I'm always fascinated about this. Cause like I could see the breakthrough for some people when I'd train them and it was like, Oh, like they figured it out. They could change the habit. Like someone I told, I was like, you know, like if you just drop from like six days a week of like drinking a, a beer after work to like three, you'll drop like 500 calories. And you'll like, it's like, wait, 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 what? And it's like clicked for him. It was like, Oh, it's like small changes of like, yes, I've been saying that for like six months now, but finally it's breaking through, you know? So like, it is funny to see that side of it too. And I'm tying that in to your book. I'm curious, like, how did the book come along? And a lot of people have you know, expertise and knowledge, but their book seems like a massive undertaking for anyone. Take me through how you decided to do it and how that process has been. I'm curious. Oh, uh, yeah. So it was a big, it was a definitely a big undertaking, but I knew this had to happen. It was in 2014. I knew that this book had to yeah. be in the world. Um, not because I, oh, I want a book in the world or I want to be an author. It was, and it was really, it first started as a response to many of my clients saying, oh, do you have a <laughs> book? Like what book can you recommend to, to, to supplement what we're doing here? And I'm like, actually there is no book. Yeah. I need to write that book. And it was, it was the constant asking for that. And, you know, in 2014, I knew that I wasn't ready because I was still in the process of getting the yeah. research and the client stories and my own personal experience in 2019, I knew it was time. And so it, it was really, that's when 
boom. And then it was rather effortless to get to this point. I mean, it took work, but a lot of flow. But something that I've been speaking a lot about, and I think what's just so powerful is the opportunity. Everything, everything is a choice for us. Everything. And our power, our joy, our thriving is completely dependent on the choices we make. And it's not just choices <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I'm going to drink three beers instead of five this week, right? It, it is those choices, but it's more the perceptual choices about things like ch- what you choose to believe about yourself and the world. These, these We get to choose. And so when we get down to the core of the real opportunity, it really comes down to, okay, I get, Amy, I get that I'm choosing to believe that I'm an outsider here. I get that I'm choosing to believe that I'm not good enough or I'm a fraud. Okay, I, I get that I'm choosing that, but I have no idea how to choose otherwise. Right. So that's what that's why I had to write this book, because it's not that I can choose for people, but I make choice accessible. And that has always been my guarantee with it's funny that I say it's such a weird word. That has been something I really stand for with others, which is I get that you get you're choosing this, which isn't serving you. But I also get you don't know how to choose otherwise. So getting someone to that place of accessible choice, that's everything. And that is what my process, that's when I coach that. It's it's really about getting people to that, ah, oh, okay, I get it. I can choose otherwise. But like kind of like you said, that moment where it clicked, <laughs> like it wasn't yeah. accessible, but then all of a sudden it was. And so that's that really is what drove the the book was I've this choice has to be accessible for people. And the process that this book is really makes that possible. And with that too, I'm curious. So with coaching, because it is so individual and then a book is going to like the masses just take me through that that process then for you with those two kind of dichotomies oh my gosh i i am so just i acknowledge you for recognizing <laughs> that because you know it's one thing to think a thought it's another to say it to one person and it click it's another to say it to a group and it clicks but it's a totally another thing to write something down for all time yeah. for all audiences I mean, it, it truly, it was kind of a spiritual practice for me to, to really take a step back and really think through how do I frame this up to make sense. And what I decided and what I've realized now since the reviews are coming through is that what I think is going to work to get this message across, because it's worked for my clients, it's worked for me, it's going to work for some people, it's not going to work for everybody. And so, you know, in for me in this book, I had to really show what it was that instead of just tell, it's like, okay, well, here's the trick. Here's the perceptual shift. Here's the process. Here's the research. But like, that's not enough. It's like, well, I also have to show that. So what does that mean? I have to tell my own story. I have to share client stories. I have to give the color and the texture, which I might not do in a one-on-one coaching situation. But in order for this to really be transmitted, I have to I have to show just as much as I tell. Now, by and large, a lot of people have been like, oh, my gosh, that that has helped tremendously. Like these stories have stayed with me and like I get it. And then I've gotten some feedback like too much story, too much backstory. And I'm like, OK, well, you can't, you can't please everybody. <laughs> well, it's so hard. I mean, it's so hard to do that in any, any book you read. I mean, a lot of it is stories. So it's, it's what they want to have. And it's, we're entertained by stories. We were drawn to stories. You know, it's a big part of it too. And uh, I know we're almost out of time here. I'm just curious, like details, where can people connect with you online, learn a bit more about the book, um, everything uh, on that. I'd love to hear more. Oh, thank you. So I'm big on LinkedIn. That's the only social platform uh, that I enjoy. So my my handle is Amy Elisa Wong. Elisa spelled E L I Z A. So Amy Elisa Wong. So big on LinkedIn, and my website is always on purpose. And I you know put a lot of stuff out there just in terms of articles and and things that I'm up to. And you can get on my list about the workshops that I'm offering. And and so I would say web, website always on purpose and LinkedIn for sure. And then my book Living on Purpose. Subtitle is Five Deliberate Choices to Realize Fulfillment and Joy. That is available where all books are sold and 
really Amazon's probably the best <laughs> place to go. <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's an audiobook too, which is really fun. I got to narrate my Okay, real quick on that. How long did that take to narrate? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably a good 12 to 15 hours. No, more than that, 16 wow. hours. I was in the studio about four times, at least four time, at four hours each time. Yeah. Wow. So, you That's know what? Let's just say about 20 hours. <laughs> But it was super fun. <laughs> super fun. Yeah. yeah. I get to read the stuff you wrote. Like, yes, bring it to life. And you're thinking like, oh, people are going to hear this actually. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to make it good. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Amy, thank you so much for that time today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much.